Hello, welcome to Pride of London Fan TV. Ali here, bringing you my match review of the game at Selhurst Park between Crystal Palace and West Bromwich Albion, which of course finished 1-0 to the Eagles in another absolutely thrilling encounter. Anyway, it was though a really professional display from us in the end of the day. And we did get the three points, which now takes us to 11th in the league. So let's get into it. All the usual features, Roy's rating and man of the match. And I'm just going to start really by putting some respect on Roy Hodgson's name, because I have been a critic of him, like many of our fans at times this season, for the start of play for Roy Ball. However, yes, they did all but ensure our safety. And that is massive. Don't underestimate how massive that is in these times, having gone a year without match day revenue as a fan who supported Palace through two administrations, like many, I'm sure. Um, I can appreciate how important this has been to see us through a very alarming period for many football clubs. And I think once Roy does go, and I am an advocate for Roy going in the summer, I do think, though, that history will be kind to him. But let's get into his rating for yesterday's game. I'm going to give him a seven because he did what a manager is meant to do, which is win a football match. And it wasn't in the most entertaining fashion. But when has it been? I mean, I was watching yesterday lots of debates on social media again about the style of play. I'm kind of done with that. It's kind of, you know, it is what it is. And I'm just used to it now. But I think it was on the whole, as I said, a very professional display. Obviously, we got the penalty and it was a penalty. And I thought the ref had a good game overall. And Luca put it away well. And that means now commentators will cite Luca as one of our best players for another year or so, based on the fact that he scores penalties. However, I did think, to be fair to Luca, he had one of his better games yesterday and has been much better in the last few. The only sort of grumble you could have with Roy was the lack of subs or that it took a while to get to those substitutions. An old grumble, of course. West Brom made two changes and the only change for us at that point was the weather, but he did make those changes in the end. I was a bit surprised to see Eze come off before Jordan Ayew, but Jordan Ayew did eventually come off in the end for Andros Townsend. But Jordan Ayew did well in the end to, to walk off the pitch without bumping into a West Brom player because that's what he seemed to do for most of the match. Although I would say Jordan Ayew, in his defence, does work so hard for the team. And that's probably why Roy kept him on to protect the lead. And to be fair to Roy, you can't really argue with it. We saw the game out. We ground it out. We got three points and fair play. We are now 11th in the league above Leeds United. How's that happened? Because according to the media, Leeds are like the Harlem Globetrotters and you know, you'd think they're in the Champions League, the way the media go on about them. But we are above them in the table now. We sit 11th. Now, what will be interesting is, can we kick on? It feels a little bit like uh, when we were in lockdown and we had got ourselves in a good position. So we've now got three weeks off due to no FA Cup game for us. If you remember, we went out of the FA Cup against Wolves without having a shot on goal or a shot on target. And, of course, then the international break. And three weeks of not watching Palace will probably be good for our souls. But, you know, can we come back and kick on this time? I think we've got more of a chance in the sense that we will have a fit Jeffrey Schlupp and a much more informed Wilfred Saha. But our fixtures are difficult, which is why it was so important to get those three points against West Bromwich Albion. Uh, man of the match, I'm going to go for Kiate. I thought he swept things up really well yesterday. One really crucial intervention and block in that first half. And of course, I thought the whole back four were really good yesterday, keeping the clean sheet. Although I don't think West Brom really tested us. Um, Joel Ward continues his brilliant run of form since the Brighton game. And Gary Cahill continues to use his experience and intelligence. And left back, Patrick Van Holt, I thought, did OK. And um, was part of the back four that kept a clean sheet. So credit to him as well. So man of the match for me was Kiate. Let me know your man of the match in the comments below. Always enjoy hearing your views. Just a couple of mentions to West Bromwich Albion players. Sam Johnston, a very good goalkeeper. We don't need him, obviously, because we've got Vincenzo Guaita and Butland. But I can see a Premier League team coming in for him if West Brom do go down, which looks likely now. And of course, it was interesting to see Conor Gallagher play, a player who we were allegedly in for before we decided on Batshuayi. And up to me, that looks like a pivotal moment in our season now. We've lacked a central midfielder who can get box to box with an eye for a pass. And I thought Gallagher was good yesterday. I just think he was let down by teammates around him, really. He didn't have much around him to feed. And I think we're linked again with him for the summer for a nine million move. I would definitely think that would be quite a shrewd signing. So we'll keep an eye on that one in the summer. Anyway, as always, let me know your thoughts. It's going to be an interesting three weeks, isn't it? Could be an ideal time for a Roy Hodgson contract extension. Dare I say it? How would you feel if that was announced? And as always, let me know your thoughts. Who was your man of the match? What was your Roy rating? And I will see you. I might do a few videos in this three-week period, but I will definitely see you for the next one. And as always, if you enjoyed what you've seen today, press that subscribe button.